My interest in Futura was rekindled a few years ago when I gave a talk about the origins and significance of the typeface. I wanted to print a keepsake for the audience as a physical reference to the design. Up to this point in my 30-year career, I was a little dubious about Futura, finding it cold and difficult to work with. But as I handset the metal type, it became clear to me that I'd been missing something. Once I pulled the first proof, I could see that it was much warmer, evenly colored, and certainly more readable than I'd remembered. My impression of the design was transformed when I saw how it looked on the printed page. It was so much more balanced and readable than any other geometric sans serif I'd worked with. It had a careful rhythm of black and white space and an organic feeling that's missing from contemporary knockoffs. This was the Futura I wanted to see made available to the world once again. In 1924, the Bauhaus was just five years old, but the impact of its search for fundamental forms in art and design was already being felt throughout Europe. Against the backdrop of Bauhaus modernism, German typographer Paul Renner began designs for a new, highly rational, geometrically infused typeface. The typeface was to become the epitome of modernism in typography. The term geometric sans is a deceptively simple description. Simply assembling geometric shapes makes for a visually imbalanced letter form. They're awkward and unartistic. Renner masterfully manipulated the geometry to please the eye of the reader. Futura was released in 1927 in just two weights, light and medium, but it was an immediate success. Over the next 28 years, new weights and styles were added, increasing its usefulness, its reputation, and its popularity worldwide. But with each development in typesetting technology, from various versions of phototype to digital, to the current computer formats, the character and finesse of the original degraded a bit. Much like a photocopy of a photocopy loses its fidelity, Futura's shapes lost their precision. Futura now not only restores the shapes, but we've sorted out the rather haphazard sequence and naming of styles that were originally designed. The result is a larger, more harmonious, more rational family. This gave us the opportunity to truly revolutionize the Futura Now family by making variable fonts from the new data. A designer can now fine tune the exact amount of weight and width that Futura has in their layouts. Futura's geometric shapes lent themselves to several decorative variations in the original design. I was able to reproduce and then build on that idea of geometric display typography with several new designs. My colleague Terence Weinsroll picked up on the lesser-known Futura display family and expanded it to include six new weights and italics for each. Similarly, Juan Villanueva expanded on the unique Futura script typeface, originally drawn by Edwin Schar in 1954. It now includes five weights. Each of the fonts in the Futura Now family has over 600 characters and supports 89 languages, including Russian and Greek. With 72 new font styles, Futura now includes 102 fonts. The family has a contemporary and rational alignment of names and weights for the kind of user experience we as designers expect from a font family in the 21st century. Futura now restores order and lends superior utility to one of the most revered typefaces of all time. Unmistakably Futura, definitively now. <laughs>